Dresner, and this is Research TV, delivering the inside scoop from market research leaders and experts. Research TV is brought to you by the Market Research Event, the largest and most comprehensive conference in the world dedicated to elevating the business value of insights. Joining me today is Sundar Dori Raj. He is Senior Quantitative Analyst with Google. Sundar, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let's start with a little bit about your role and responsibilities at Google. Okay, so I am I'm a statistician uh, at Google and I, I work on YouTube. So I gather information about our users, uh, usually in an experiment framework to determine what they like in terms of ad formats or uh, whether uh, how ad formats actually affect their usage on the site. Um, most of it is in terms of experiments, but we also do quite a bit of retrospective analysis to determine whether um, our ads are actually working and how to improve the user experience as it comes to ads. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, Google has a very unique uh, approach to insight generation, uh, whereas typically you have the internal client coming to the research department or the uh, analysis group and the analytics team and ask, you know, with a question. Um, that's not the case with you guys. Can you please tell our audience a little bit about how that works? Sure. So we actually have a very bottom-up approach to our, our analytics. Uh, a lot of the questions and the answers are derived not from upper management, but from the workers such as myself uh, in terms of working with um, other analysts who are on the same level as me, working with product managers. But we, we, we work collaboratively to determine what, what the questions are, and then we have free range as to how to answer them. So as long as there's mathematical rigor involved, we, we are completely free to figure out how to solve the problem. But the questions are derived by us. We, we, uh, we, have, to, we have some metrics that we need to determine um, as being successful, but how we get from point A to point B and the questions that are along the way are very much determined by us. Just so I understand clearly, you actually sit down and sort of brainstorm how to tackle business issues that are funneled down to you, but the questions asked, not just the answers, are coming from you. Correct. So the business issues, correct, are coming from higher levels, but those are very high level uh, high level um, objectives. The, uh, we work in a collaborative environment in terms of figuring out how to solve those business issues and we have, it's us, it's uh, the, the engineers that have to determine the best approaches to actually solving these problems. So the specific questions that are being um, uh, um, asked for these larger general business issues are are done by the, the, the engineers, the product managers, the UX designers, the, the UI designers, all of these people come together uh, to try to solve a single, a single problem. Um, and then once we figured out what this question is, and actually that's the most difficult part of the job, is the answers are much easier to come by once we have the correct question. And once we have the, the correct question, going off and figuring out the answers are a little bit easier, but we also have free range as to how we do that, whether it's different mo mathematical models or statistical models, um, gathering different sources of data to pull them together, uh, working with teams outside of our group to determine whether or not the, the data that we need is, is available and, and, and robust. And so we, we work, the collaborative environment that we have um, is a collaborative environment at, at the bottom of, of the ladder, not at the top. We're not being told from the top that th you need to go and pick this particular piece of data to get this particular answer. Uh, I, I think it, it leads to a much more um, a lot, much more truthful type of, or transparent rather, transparent way of, of, of conducting business because um, we know that the research that we do is sound because we, we, um, it's, it's not dictated to us how to actually conduct our, our research. Our research is, is dictated by ourselves. Extraordinary. So then you're coming back, obviously, with all kinds of different answers to questions that someone did not ask. Right, yeah. right. So we, we they, the, 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 uh, the upper management, the executives, they don't necessarily know the specific questions. They actually don't know 
the, the details behind, uh, the, the technical details behind a lot of the questions that need to be asked. So uh, without that knowledge, they, uh, like you said, we can, we can, they can set these high level business objectives, but they don't know how to technically solve these problems. So it's completely up to us to, to do that. That I think is an extraordinarily empowered position for a research to be in and one that many researchers probably envy, uh, would envy. And I also think that it might be a little bit intimidating or scary for a lot of people in research to go, you mean I can, I, I have, the, I have the, the, the leeway and the latitude to basically um, figure out how I'm going to help you from scratch. Uh, is that something that intimidates you in your role? Not really because we, we as, um, as part of our culture, we build in failure into our, in, into our work. We know that nine out of the 10 times we try to solve a problem, we're going to fail at it. At it. And we understand that, and our, our bosses understand that. My boss's boss understands that. Uh, without some, some level of, of threshold of failure, which at Google is an extremely high level of threshold, you mean, uh, just by looking at some of the public things that Google's done in the past year, they, they've looked at certain projects and cut them they've got, they, uh, simply because they know that there's, there's some sort of failure. That, that, that comes all the way down to the level of the engineer. The engineer knows that they are going to try something and, and fail quite a bit, but it's that one time that they succeed that really pushes Google forward. And we, um, as, as engineers, as product managers, we, uh, we know that this is part of the culture that, that, we're, that we're contributing to. And it, it leads to more innovation because we're, we're constantly um, trying to get answers to questions. The questions may need to be refined. Um, and uh, go, uh, we have this feedback loop that's constantly going at Google um, to try to understand, um, you know, all the, the bigger picture of what our users want, what our users need. Um, but this this level of failure uh, or this this culture of of, uh, uh, of allowing failure with the um, with the, the thought that you're going to fail a lot but eventually succeed that leads to people trying things that might be crazy that, and and giving the leeway to try this crazy idea with the expectation that it might not actually work but you know there's a slight chance that it might work and if it does how great would that be and so that that's built into our culture and that's built into how we work and you know it, uh, looking at how the culture of this uh, of google in terms of how we reward um, failures versus successes. I, I've never been in another company that has allowed that level of thre threshold. Any, uh, previous companies, failure was always a bad thing. And it was never looked at as a learning experience, as something that you can build upon. Right. Uh, um, before we close, I just want to note one thing because I think that our audience would be interested in this, and that is that internally you are actually creating software programs right. to help you navigate and get through this data more efficiently and quickly as it's building up right. you know, along right. the way, right? right. Yeah. right. Any, any thoughts on, on that and where it's going? This, uh, that has, uh, one of the other things besides these data warehousing tables, the, um, the uh, increase of internal tools that we use has uh, improved my efficiency quite a bit. Um, it's something that, it, it's, it's an ongoing process and they change, it, their entire team's dedicated to creating these tools for us analysts and actually other engineers to use. And as we, as we move forward, the, the amount of data that we're collecting I think is increasing faster than these, these tools could actually, yeah, faster than the tools could actually be created and maintained. So, um, but it, it is an important part of our company uh, to create these tools, internal tools, and sometimes these tools actually get open sourced and given to the, uh, to the public, but it's really impor an important part of our company to create tools to give fast turnaround, um, especially as the data sizes grow. We want to be able to get the insights at the same rate we did when we had a million users. We had a million users, now we have hundreds of millions of users. 
we need to be able to get the same insights very quickly. So uh, the tools that we create are, are a critical part of that. An, an ongoing challenge, it definitely. Is, yes, Sundar, you've given us uh, a wealth of, of insight into what's going on at Google via YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, and on that note, I want to conclude this episode of Research TV. Thank you for joining us. And for our audience, um, I'm Mark Dresner. I hope you'll tune in next time. And you've just heard the Insight Scoop.